Hello, my name is Brad Kramer, owner of Provenio Consulting. Today I would like to talk about fall protection. A lot of people are killed in uh, falls from heights in the United States every year. Um, according to OSHA, about one quarter of all lost time injuries are from slips, trips, and falls, but about one third of fatalities are falls from heights. Um, according to OSHA, any, anything above four feet is going to be considered working from heights in general industry. Um, there are a few other industry standards. For example, in construction, um, six feet is what's considered working from heights. But in general industry, anytime you have an employee that's more than four feet off the ground, um, that employee is required to have some form of fall protection. Think about the types of injuries that we see if somebody falls. Paralysis, broken bones, head injuries, a lot of times those, those uh, types of injuries, if, they, if that person survives a fall, are gonna be life-changing and lifelong types of injuries um, that they may never recover from. So think about that as a, as a business manager or owner. Could you live with yourself if one of your employees fell and was in a wheelchair or killed? I wanna take a look at uh, one video here, and I don't have the rights to this video, it's taken off of uh, YouTube. And this, the scary thing about this is this could happen in literally any workplace um, I've ever been in. It could be an office building, an industrial facility, even people's homes. So let's take a look at it and think about how many times have we seen um, the, the main error that this person made, how many times have we seen that error made in our lives? Ouch. Let's go ahead and watch that one more time. So what did you see as the errors that were made there? Did the person have the wrong type of ladder or the wrong um, ladder? That ladder should have been much taller for the job that they were doing. Because that ladder was too short, that person was standing on the upper, um, upper, um, uh, legs, or excuse me, the upper steps on that ladder, which they should not have ever been on, right? Too short of a ladder, standing on the top steps, um, and then they didn't have anybody that was healing or holding that ladder for them when they were near the top. Um, and also because of uh, the type of uh, atmosphere that they're working in, they weren't able to use three points of contact. If they were able to hold on to the top of the ladder with one hand while they're doing the work with their other hand, they would have been much more stable. So there's several very, very easy things that could have been done to prevent um, the type of accident where we saw that this person fall, um, most likely contributing to some kind of paralysis or some very severe back injuries, all right? And like I said, the scary thing about this type of injury is this could and does happen in many, many places. Um, this could happen in almost any home, any workplace. So what are you doing in your workplace to prevent your employees from fall injuries just like that. The average person, they're a very good response time for when they fall, their body's reaction is 0.2 seconds. So 0.2 seconds is very quick, one fifth of a second. In 0.2 seconds before your body even knows that you're falling, you've already fallen six and a half feet. So for the typical person, that six and a half feet that they've fallen in that 0.2 seconds, they cannot recover from. You cannot catch yourself, even if there is something there for you to grab onto. Um, by the time your body is moving at that speed and that far, you don't have enough physical strength if there is even something that you can grab onto to stop your fall. Um, so your reaction time is not the right thing to bank on here for your safety. So what kind of fall protection are we using or what kind of measures are we putting in place? So we just saw a ladder, for example, a ladder used incorrectly. Um, in this case, if OSHA came in and inspected, which they very likely do following a severe injury like this, um, the first thing they want to know is, did you train that employee? Did they know how to choose the correct ladder? Next thing is, why were they using that ladder? Did you have the right ladder in place? Did they maybe not grab the correct ladder? Or was this the ladder that they were given to do the job? And if in that case, um, you'd be in a lot of trouble. Um, especially if that employee wasn't trained. 
So do you make the right ladders and the right equipment to do the job the right and safe way available to your employees? How about fall protection? Do you uh, provide, you just go right to harnesses or do you look for some kind of engineered solutions? Can we put in LED light bulbs so our employees aren't up there changing light bulbs every month? A lot of facilities, when they go make that change from say halide or fluorescent light bulbs to LED, all of a sudden they're, they're, um, the amount of time and money that they spend changing light bulbs drops drastically. Um, from my experience working as a safety manager in different facilities, um, we went from changing, you know, pretty much every month maintenance having to go up and change a round of light bulbs to once LED lights were put in, they never had to go up and change bulbs again once that initial project was done. So can we eliminate our employees having to go up and work from heights? How about railing? Do we put railing into place? Um, railing can be very safe and robust when it's done right. It doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg, um, but that's a much better option in many cases than actually relying on harnesses. Um, if you do have harnesses, now when we're starting to talk about personal fall protection harnesses and stuff like that, do you train your employees properly? If you ever see your employees wearing your harnesses and say around their leg strap that's not tightened up, you see that that strap just loose and hanging around. If that employee were ever to fall and while they're wearing that harness, if they're a guy, they're probably going to be castrated. All right, so you want to train your employees that they recognize the hazards associated with using that type of PPE so they're wearing it correctly. So if we look at, uh, here's an example of a harness. This is a, a, mult, a multi-dynamics harness. Um, I'm actually a distributor, so if you're looking for fall protection equipment like this, I'd love to help you. Um, but even more than that, I'd love to see you just have the right safety equipment in place, even if it's something like railing, um, that I'm not a distributor for. So we have good harnesses here. Do we teach our employees to inspect this every time they wear it correctly? Do, are they wearing it correctly? Are they inspecting it and making sure that it's in good, good working order? Um, lanyards have limitations. So here we have a double leg lanyard, right? So we have this one attached to the back and it's got two different, um, two different straps on it or two different lanyards so that if they're going from one anchor point to another, so this one would be secured off my anchor point. I'm walking, I secure this one to my next anchor point, and then I can unclip this one, for example. But one major limitation um, with lanyards such as this one, and I see these in the workplaces all the time um, where they're not gonna work because of this. This lanyard is about six feet long. It's designed so that if I were to fall, it's gonna stretch out to about nine feet long. All right, I'm just shy of uh, six feet tall. Um, so if I was wearing that harness, I was just showing you in the D-ring, um, when the D-ring stops that fall, that D-ring is going to come up about 18 inches. All right, so we have seven and a half feet for, for my height and my harness give, nine feet for the lanyard. And what's down below us on the floor and how low is that anchor point? So if you have a facility where you're anywhere close to 20 feet ceiling height or less, um, these type of harnesses, are not the right type of harness in most cases for your facility. You're gonna to wanna to go with a self-retractable lanyard, right? These work um, similar to how a seatbelt works, right? This ties off to the D-ring on your back, stretches out to go work with you. If you were to fall, it locks up on you, right? Just about had a little safety in it myself there, pulled a little too hard. Falls, it locks up on you, right? If you have leading edge, so if you have an edge where your employee's working, um, say some kind of ledge on the edge of a building or on a platform, if they were to fall, is this rated for a leading edge or is it gonna cut? So you wanna make sure you have the right equipment. Um, a lot of times these are also anchored to the ceiling, so they're right up on the ceiling. So um, sometimes what employees will do is they pull this down and then they tie this off down at the ground level. So they just grab on to the carabiner anytime they're gonna do some work wrap it onto their harness and away they go. However, that's very hard on the springs and stuff that are inside your, your retractable lanyard. So that's where something very simple like this comes in. This is just a, a long piece of string and it's got a hook on one end. Um, so this is called a tagline. I simply connect this to, to um, my carabiner right here, right? And then this 
This um, hangs down at ground level. So now the employee just grabs on the string, pulls the harness down, or excuse me, pulls the lanyard down to them, and it's not gonna be wearing out the springs and equipment. Do your employees inspect this regularly? Every time they use it, they should be pulling out, pulling this out, checking and making sure that the cable or the, the nylon strap is in good working order, that everything looks good, that the carabiners are in good working order. Are they inspecting it? So there's a lot that goes into having a good fall protection program. Have you assessed your hazards? Do you have the right equipment in place? Have you trained your employees to use them properly? And, and all that kind of stuff to make sure that you have a good robust program. All right, so if your employees are at, da at danger because of fall protection or working from heights, what can we do to help protect our employees from not having those life-changing and altering injuries like paralysis, broken bones, traumatic head injuries, or fatalities? So if you'd like any, any help with your fall protection program, we at Provenio Consulting would love to help you. Thank you and have a safe day.